this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm demonstrating how to crochet the Simple Home Basket, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you'll find both the right and left-handed video tutorials, and right underneath those, there will be a link to the written pattern, as well as all the supplies you need, and any other tutorials I may reference here today. This pattern calls for two balls of Red Heart Sweet Home, which is a number six bulky yarn in your choice of two colors, or you could use two of the same color and make it all solid if you prefer. You'll also need a USL or eight millimeter hook. This one is by Brittany. And of course, stitch markers, scissors, yarn needles, and the usual yarn tools are always helpful. So let's start by taking a look at the finished basket. As you can see, the simple home basket is pretty darn big. It's about 13 inches in diameter and about nine and a half inches tall. And as you can see, it stands up on its own. Unlike many crochet baskets, while it's still soft and you can collapse it, it really does stand up all on its own without having to be filled. Now the trick to that is that, as you can see, the inner has a different pattern from the outer. It's actually two pieces that are joined at the top. So I'll be demonstrating how to do that here shortly. So if I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and pull those pieces apart, but they fit together quite nicely and really help this basket stand up on its own. So the inside is just simple single crochet worked up in stripes. The outside, again, single crochet worked up in two color sections for some nice color blocking. And then I did do a label, which I also have a tutorial for linked in, um, written out in the pattern. And I'll talk just a little bit about that here at the end. So that is a good overview of the basket. Now let's zoom in and look at those stitches. All right, to make the simple home basket, we begin with the liner, which is part one, the inner portion of the basket. So we're going to start with our color A. So for this demo, I'm using the Moody Blues colorway. I'm going to begin with a magic circle. So I yarn the, wind the yarn around my finger twice towards me, and then go through, pull that back loop underneath the first one, yarn over, pull up a loop. See how that's nice and secure? And from there, I can begin working my single crochets right into that ring. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, or if you'd like a more detailed tutorial for that, I do have a separate tutorial for that linked at the link in this description. So from there, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work nine single crochets right back into that ring. So when I want to do that, I want to make sure that I go under the ring that's still wrapped around my finger and that tail. That's what will help us gather it closed at the end. I also find with this super bulky yarn, See, I can go ahead and pull my finger out at this point, which is great, it holds that ring open, but I also want to go ahead and put a stitch marker right in that first stitch I made. Sometimes with these fuzzier yarns, it can just be a little bit harder to see your stitches, so using stitch markers to help you out is always a good idea. Now I'll go ahead and add eight more single crochets so that we have nine total, all worked into that ring and making sure to work over that tail again. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now that tail wanted to get a little bit short on me, but it's still sticking out right there. And now that I've got all nine single crochets made, I can go ahead and give it a tug. There it goes. And you can see that just cinched that center right up. I like to keep my thumb and finger over it to stabilize it a little bit as I pull. I don't want to pull so hard I break the yarn, but I do want it nice and tight in there. And then of course I can weave in that end when I'm all done. So now I know I can join right to the top of that first stitch I made, which I've marked with my stitch marker with the slip stitch. And that is it for round one. Now the rest of this pattern is really just made in single crochets and the increases at the bottom of the basket follow your standard increases for any single crochet circle. So since we've got nine single crochets in the first round, that means our second round will have double the number of stitches, 18 stitches, which means we're going to chain one and work two single crochets in each stitch around. So I can work right back into that marked stitch because I know it was the first stitch of our round for my first single crochet of this round. And then I'll go ahead and move that stitch marker right on up to the top of that stitch. So then I can go right back in that same stitch for my second single crochet, and then just continue to work all the way around, working two single crochets 
in each stitch. So that I have 18 stitches at the end of round two. So I will see you at the end of round two so we can start round three together. Okay, so when you've got your 18 stitches, you can go ahead and again, just slip stitch right to that first stitch of the round. And of course, we're going to continue in pattern for our standard circles for round three. We're going to chain one, single crochet right back in that first stitch. Move that stitch marker up to that first stitch so we don't lose it and we know exactly where it is. And then two single crochets in the next stitch. So that first one just gets one, two in the next, and that's our repeat. One in the next stitch, two in the stitch after that. One, two. One in the next stitch, two in the next stitch after that. So by doing this, we will increase by nine stitches again. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with standard crochet circles, typically what you're going to do is increase by the number of stitches you started with in your first round for each round after that. So our first round had nine stitches. That means our second round will have 18 stitches. We're here in our third round that will have 27 stitches and all, all the way around. Now I may have lost count here, so as I finish this round up, I'm going to go back and count my stitches and make sure I've got my 27. And then I will finish it up and we can begin round four together. All right, so I did it. I got my 27 stitches and I'm ready to join to that first stitch for a slip stitch. Round four, of course, we'll continue our pattern. We're just going to scooch over our increases a little bit so that we don't end up making corners on the bottom of our basket. So what that means is for round four, we're going to chain one, single crochet back in that first stitch. Go ahead and move that stitch marker up. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and put my second stitch in that same stitch, my increase right in that very first stitch. So two single crochets there. Then I'm just going to single crochet in the next two stitches. So one and one. That's our repeat. So two in the next, one, two, and then one in each of the next two. One and two. So if you've been thinking about the math of this, essentially each round as we continue on growing the bottom of our basket here, we're just going to have one more stitch in between our increases. We just want to shift those increases around every once in a while so that we don't end up with uh, corners essentially points on the bottom of our basket where the increases have lined up. So that's why we shift the increases around a little bit, but otherwise it's just a basic formula. You just have one more single crochet all by itself in between your increases with each round, and each round will increase by nine stitches. As you can see, it grows very, very quickly with this nice bulky yarn, so you can get a big basket made in relatively short order. Now I've included instructions on the written pattern if you want to change the size of this basket and make it a custom size. I'm not sure how much bigger you can go and still have it stand up. I think at a certain point just the weight of it may keep it from standing up on its own. But you could absolutely go smaller, stop at a uh, shorter point here, a stop earlier in the increases and have a uh, smaller basket. So those are included in the notes if you want to change the size of this. Otherwise you can just follow the written pattern to keep your increases working here. Just kind of take a note of how many stitches in between your increases. As you can see, you go through this yarn super fast. I should have wound, out, wound off a little bit more here before I started this round. But it's just two single crochets in one stitch and then a single crochet in each of the next two stitches for round four. So at the end of round four, we should have 36 stitches total, which is of course nine more than the previous round. Here I am at my last two stitches, so I know it worked out, one and one. I've got my 45 stitches and I'm ready to join. So from there, we're just going to continue our increases in pattern. Round five, we'll single crochet in the first three stitches, then two in the next, three, then two, three, then two. The next round, two, then four, two, then four, two, then four. The next round, five, then two, five, then two, five, then two. So I think you see the pattern. We're just going to continue growing the bottom of our basket. Then after we've got our diameter made, we're ready to start working evenly in rows. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and we'll jump to that point in the pattern. Okay, so if you follow the written pattern, you'll keep increasing through round nine for the liner, which will end with 81 stitches around. I'm just going to stop here for the sake of time and so it's a little easier to see. 
when you finish round nine, you actually want to join with your next color. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this slip stitch back out, put my hook back in the loop there, and then when I put my hook in that stitch to make the join, I'm going to pull up my second color. For this one, I'm just going to use the dark denim colorway. So I'm going to yarn over with my new color and pull that right on through the first stitch and through my loop. So I've slip stitched with my new color. Then I'm just going to let that end hang to be woven in later. And I'm also going to let my color A hang back here because I'm going to pick that back up again. I'm going to carry these along the inside of our liner, which will actually become the outside as you'll see here in a few minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and carry these strands on the inside so that I don't have a bunch to weave in. So at the end of making the liner, we'll only have four ends to weave in, two from each of the colors. So let's come back to our right side here. Now to begin round 10, we're just going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. This round is just worked even. So if you want to go ahead, you can work over your end a little bit here of this color, just to tack it down a little bit. So there's the first stitch of that round. So I'll go ahead and move my stitch marker on up, like so. And then I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch around for round 10. Rounds 11 and 12 are exactly the same. We just continue with this color, our color B, working a single crochet in each stitch around. By working evenly, this will start drawing in the sides of our basket and start making the, the height now that we've finished our base. So just single crochet on around for three rounds, rounds 10, 11, and 12, each one of which should have 81 stitches. And then I'll join you back here for round 13. Okay, so this is my tiny little round 10, but round 11 and 12, like I said, are exactly the same. And really after that, it's all the same as you work on up the height of this basket. Let me pull up the finished one again so you can see the interior liner here. This was my color A, then I switched to color B and started working even. So I just changed colors, just like I showed you every three rows. And then after working two more rows of my color A, which took me through, uh, would have been round 26, that's where I went ahead and broke that yarn and finished off and begun the outer portion. So after you've made your inner portion, go ahead, break your yarn, weave in all your ends and set it aside. And we're going to make the outer portion, which you can see right here now. All right, so here we have the bottom of the basket the bottom of the outer portion of the basket specifically. And it is begun exactly the same way. The only difference is you're gonna probably wanna start it with your color B or whatever color you want to make the bottom portion of your outer. Again, rounds one through nine are exactly the same as the inner portion, so you've already seen me talk about those. The only difference is then you want to work one more round, round 10, one more round of increases. So for the outer portion, you wanna make sure to work one more round of increases so that it can come around the outside of the liner. So at the end of round 10 for the outer, you'll have 90 stitches. Then of course, you can just start working even again, just like I demoed on our last swatch. Then when you get to right up here, which would be, I'm looking at my pattern here to make sure I'm saying the right one, round 21, that's our last round with color B. So I'm gonna pull my swatch back up and show you how to finish that off with my seamless finishing and then how to begin the second portion. And then I'll show you how to join them together and a little bit about the label. Okay, so here's our little swatch from before, but I'm going to pretend that this is round 21 of our outer and we've been working even for a while and I'm ready to finish it off. So to do my seamless finishing, what you want to do is stop when you've made the last stitch of the round and go ahead and pull, cut the yarn by the way, and then pull that loop on up through like so. Then we're going to take a yarn needle. I've got a great big one here for this yarn. Definitely one of the larger ones I've seen out there. There we go. And then I am going to find the second stitch of the round, not the first one right here where we would have had our stitch marker, but the second one right there. And I'm going to go underneath both loops from front to back with my yarn needle. Pull that on through. And then what I want to do is sort of line this loop up on top of the loops of the first stitch. So I want to sort of cover the top of that stitch with that loop, then bring this back down to the stitch it came out of. So you can see it's coming out of the stitch right here. I want to go back down into the center between the two loops of that stitch with my yarn needle and just go straight down into that stitch. And when I pull that through, you can see I've lined up those two loops that I've just sewn right on top of the first stitch of that round. 
Now what I like to do is just go ahead and send my yarn needle underneath those two loops, the two loops of the stitch we skipped over, just to help tack it down like so before I go ahead and weave in that end just like I normally would. And obviously normally I'd weave it in a lot better than this, but just for the sake of time, I'll pull that on through for now and pretend that's all nicely woven in. So by doing that, I have maintained my stitch count around. I can just work under those top two loops that I've actually sewn and I haven't changed my stitch count at all, but I also don't have a join showing there. So then I'm ready to begin round 22. So for round 22 of the outer, once again, I'm going to bring back my color A because at this point I'd be switching to the lighter color for the upper half of the basket. And let me switch down to a little bit lighter portion here. This is a little too dark to see. So I'm gonna come down here to where it's a little lighter and join. Now for round 22, you can join to any stitch near the join of the previous round. I can't even tell where it is right now without looking extra closely. Just wanna be somewhat nearby. It doesn't have to be right in the join. Then I'm going to join with a single crochet in the back loop only. So to join with a single crochet, what I like to do is make a slip knot and put it on my hook. Then find the stitch I wanna to join to. Again, it could be any of these stitches and I'm going to go under the back loop only. Again, this is something I do have a separate video tutorial for. The front loop is always the loop of the top V that's closest to you. The back loop is always the one that's furthest away. So I'm just going to go right in the center of that V with my hook, under the back loop only, pull up my loop, yarn over, and pull through. So that's my standing single crochet, which is also has a separate tutorial, and back loop only, which also has a separate tutorial. Now for round 22, I'm just going to continue single crocheting in the back loop only all the way around this round. After that, of course, I can just join with a slip stitch and continue to single crochet under both loops for the remainder of the basket. For the outer, you'll want to maintain, continue basically single crocheting evenly until you have 28 rounds total. Now that's, uh, I believe, two more than in the inner. One of those, of course, is the greater increase, the one more round of increases, round 10. And one more is to help make up the extra height because the outer, of course, needs to be just that little bit bigger to go all the way around the inner portion. So by working in the back loop only, I create this really great ridge, which if I set this aside, now that it's, again, it's just single crochets at this point and pull up the finished basket, you can see hopefully here, this creates that nice, just that nice little line there and gives it a little bit more of a finished touch. After, again, you've single crocheted all the way through round 28, then we're ready to join our inner and our outer pieces together. Now, one note, before you assemble your basket, you may want to go ahead and add a label. This is optional, it's totally up to you. It could be a label, it could be um, a pretty button, whatever you like. Now, to make this one, again, I do have some instructions in the written pattern, which is at the link in the description, and I used my Cricut Maker. However, if you don't have a Cricut Maker, or if you do for that matter, you can use the Cricut Faux Suede. Um, you could even use a pair of scissors to cut it out by hand. It's basically just a piece of Faux Suede that's been cut with some holes in the corner to sew it on with, and then I used a Bistro Chalk Marker. Uh, this one is by Marvi Uchida. I probably terribly mispronouncing that, but basically a chalk marker to go over the faux suede and it gave it this really great look. So that was just a very simple label I added. And I did sew that on before I assembled the basket because then of course I didn't have to worry about sewing all the way through and I could just have my ends woven in on the back of the outer. So if you want to go add, add a label, go ahead and do that now and then we will assemble the basket. Okay, so as soon as you've got your outer portion and your inner portion made, it's time to assemble your basket. Now I've still got an active loop here attached to my white yarn for my outer portion and my inner portion is finished. And I just want to point out one more time that the right side of the stitches are on the inside of the inner portion so that when we assemble our basket, the nice side shows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just insert, and normally I would weave in these ends first. I'm just uh, going to do a few stitches here for demonstration. But I'm going to go ahead and insert the inner portion of my basket in the outer portion. It doesn't matter where those seams are. You can try and line them up if you want to, maybe put them opposite, whatever you like. Like I say, do even those ends in first. This is just for demo purposes here real quick. So I've got my inner portion in my outer portion. It's nice and flat in there, and I can see that they're the same height and they're nicely lined up. So I don't need to worry about what stitch I'm going to join to here. They're all just the same stitch all around, so I can go ahead and just join 
put the hook back in the active loop of the outer here. And here's where we need to add a little bit of thought. For the outer portion, we had 90 stitches in each round. For the inner portion, we have 81. So that means we're going to join eight stitches from the out outer to the inner, and I'll demo that in a moment. And then for the next two stitches of the outer, outer portion will be worked in the same stitch of the inner portion. So let's do that here together. I'm going to start by chaining one, and then I'm going to work a single crochet right in that first stitch of the outer, and then I'm just going to pick up the inner and pick any stitch. Doesn't matter at all, any stitch of the inner portion. Put my hook in there, yarn over, and pull it through both of those stitches like so. Then I can just yarn over and finish that single crochet. So that's one. I'm going to do that seven more times so I have a total of eight. So there, go through the next stitch of the outer and the next stitch of the inner. Make a single crochet, so that's two. Then I'll come here for the next one. Three. Just take your time, make sure you go through the next stitch of both layers, there's four. And then five. Six. And here is seven. And here is eight. There we are. I'm just going to double check, make sure I didn't lose count somewhere there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is where we have to be a little more careful. I'm going to join the next stitch of the outer, so our ninth stitch, to the next stitch of the inner. But then I'm going to come over here to the next stitch of the outer and go back to that same stitch of the inner. So those are stitches nine and 10, like so. Then we start over again with just eight stitches worked evenly, so to speak. We go to the next stitch and the next stitch. Make sure you don't end up back in that same one again. There we go. So we'll do that eight times and then we'll do the same thing of working two outer stitches into one inner stitch. So just continue right on around your basket like so for this next round and then I'll be back with our finishing. All right, so round one of the assembly was just getting those joined together there. And then for round two, we just slip stitch in the back loop only of each of those single crochets around. You know how to slip stitch and I've already shown you the back loop only. Again, if you don't want to do the back loop only, you can go under both loops. I just think it gives it a nice little finished edge right here. And that is how you make the simple home basket using Sweet Home Yarn by Red Heart. I hope you'll give it a try. Again, please go to the link in the description where you'll find both tutorials, a link to the written pattern with each one of those rows completely written out for you, as well as links to all the supplies you need. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe because we do lots of lives too and you don't want to miss those. Have a great day.